Between 15 years of building my own websites and my client projects, I've bought well over 100 grand worth of web hosting in my career. I have tried every major web hosting company out there, and when I've chosen wrong, bad things happened. I've watched customers leave websites because pages loaded too slowly. I have gotten those panicked calls at 2 a.m. when a site went down right before a big launch. The good news is I can tell you that's not the case with every host, and there is a clear winner among hosting companies. But with so many out there, knowing who to pick can be tricky. Now, every other video like this is just gonna give you a bunch of nerdy stats that don't mean very much to the average small business owner who just needs to make a decision and get this working. So we're gonna have a bit more fun with this and do our own real world scoring on what actually matters. First, I am making my community manager, Letitia, who has never bought web hosting in her life, buy the simplest, cheapest WordPress hosting from the top 10 most popular companies. We'll see exactly how long it took to go from the sales page to the screen where you can actually start making your website. And she's gonna weigh in on exactly how confusing, easy, or painful each one was. My great grandkids are gonna discover this PC and they're gonna find a way to turn it on. And it's still gonna say typing. We're also gonna be testing website speed, which is super important because if a page doesn't load within about three seconds, you can kiss your leads goodbye. We loaded my actual homepage onto each host, complete with full images and Google fonts, so it's a solid reality check. Letitia is also gonna be contacting each company's support to ask them to do a really specific nerdy thing that my techie sidekick Tyler here devised and rating them on whether they actually did it for her or just gave her instructions plus just how easy and fast it was to get help. And of course, I'm gonna show you each host's pricing, storage limits, and whether they include the essentials for free. And since a lot of you watching might be building sites for clients, I'm gonna let you know how many sites each host lets you build on their most basic plan. So I'm gonna be ranking them as we go into tiers with a clear winner, so you know exactly which host is the best choice in 2025. So that is the game. Now let's start off strong with our first contender, Hostinger. Their cheapest WordPress hosting plan is $2.99 a month, which is a great price, but how easy and fast was it for Letitia to go from their sales page to the WordPress dashboard? She seemed to zoom through this one and it took her exactly five minutes to get up and running. And her customer support experience was good too. They took care of her requests for her over eight minutes of chatting and she was good to go. Now I actually had Letitia rate each host on a scale of one to 10 on how easy or hard each one was to buy and to get help from. So the lower the score, the easier the process was and the higher, the bigger the hassle. So what is your hassle score for hosting her, Letitia? No hassle. The website was super easy to navigate, chat support was awesome, and I got what I needed done in under 10 minutes. So one out of 10 on the hassle score. Sweet, and my homepage loaded up in 2.46 seconds on Hostinger, which is actually the fastest on our list. And when it comes to inclusions, here's what we've got. Storage, 25 gigs, free domain name, yes. Free migration, meaning they'll bring your site over from another host for you, yes. In fact, Hostinger actually offers free migration for unlimited sites, while most other hosting companies charge for migration, or at least they limit the number of sites you can migrate for free. SSL certificate, which is super important for security. You definitely need this. Yes, they include it. Automatic backups, yes. Unlimited traffic, yes. And the number of websites you can make on this plan is 25. That is great if you're a web pro and you're also making sites for clients and it's by far the highest on our entire list. The next highest is only 10. So with all that in mind, Hostinger belongs solidly in S tier. And spoiler alert, if you don't really care about seeing how everyone else shakes out here, you just wanna get on with buying the best host, Hostinger is the clear winner here. They're who I personally use and who I recommend in my paid course too. So I've actually worked out a deal with them. And if you use my link, westmcdowell.com slash hosting, you're gonna wind up on this page where you'll save even more money. So you can get that link in the description below. And if you're gonna go with Hostinger, I highly recommend actually stepping up to the business plan. It's about a dollar more and it gives you a lot of extras. Most importantly for most of you, it's gonna be the free CDN and the advanced WordPress acceleration. So those two things together just means your website's gonna load super fast from anywhere. For me, it's worth it for that alone. Plus you get their AI website tools. And if you make websites for clients, 
you get 50 sites instead of 25, which is by far the most on our entire list. And I should point out here that just like with every other host on our list that's coming up, the price is typically the best with the longer term. So in this case, the 48 month plan which, you know, if you're in business, you really should be in it for the long haul anyway. All right, so that's my best recommendation, but if you still wanna see the rest, on with our list, starting with SiteGround at $2.99 a month. The ordering process was manageable for Letitia, but she got really annoyed by constant upsells throughout the process. Do I have to? No, I don't have to pick any of these, okay. So what's your hassle score, Letitia? So SiteGround was pretty easy to navigate, but the upsells was super annoying. At least the chat support was great, so I'll give them a three out of 10. Page load speed came in at 3.19 seconds, still acceptable, but I would consider that borderline. Remember that three seconds is that magic number that you wanna come in under. All right, so here's what's included. Storage, 10 gigabytes. Free domain name, yes. Free migration, yes. SSL certificate, yes. Automatic backups, yes. Unlimited traffic, no. Number of websites, one, which is fine if you're just making your own site. But again, if you're doing it for clients, you would need to step up to a more expensive plan. So I'm putting SiteGround in B tier, decent, but limited to one website, and you don't get unlimited traffic. Okay, next up we have HostGator at 450 a month. That's already pricier than our other picks. And Letitia's experience was frustrating because they pretty much bombarded her with pop-up questions during the checkout process with no way to skip them, which really dragged out the whole process. Don't you just let me get to what I need to get? So what's that hassle score, Letitia? HostGator took so freaking long. There was a million stupid questions. It was easy enough to follow along. I just wish I didn't have to lose three years of my life in the process. Seven out of 10 for wasting my time. Okay, load speed was 3.5 seconds. We're getting into that danger zone here. And in terms of features, we have 20 gigs of storage. We do get a free domain name, no free migration. They do it, but you have to pay extra for it. You do get that security certificate, no automatic backups, yes to unlimited traffic. Number of websites you get is 10. So I do believe that's the second highest after hosting her. But with all this said and done, HostGator is gonna be in the C tier. It was just hard to order. The higher price doesn't help. The speeds are slower and it's just missing some of those key features. Okay, next we have GoDaddy. Now this is probably the one you're most familiar with. It comes in at $5.99 a month, the most expensive on our list. But it gets even worse because Letitia had a terrible experience. Their website was confusing to navigate and when she tried to contact chat support, she got pretty much no response at all. The hell is free SSL? What does that mean? So I'm afraid to ask, but what's your hassle score? Nine out of 10. The website is so annoying. Constant pop-ups and upsells. And once you've dodged that minefield, it takes forever to get to the WordPress dashboard. Also, if you ever need chat support, I suggest you go touch grass instead. I received no response from their chat support team at all. And we need to talk about load speed here. It was a painful 8.16 seconds. That's website death territory. Okay, but onto the features. So you get 25 gigs of storage, you do get a free domain name, free migration, yes. Security certificate, yes. You do get automatic backups. You do get unlimited traffic and they give you one website. So even with all these inclusions you get, I'm putting GoDaddy in F tier. It's expensive, it's slow, terrible support, and you're limited to just one website. Don't do it. All right, next we have Bluehost at $2.95 a month. So Letitia found the ordering process pretty straightforward, but there was one really annoying thing. They automatically added a lot of extra products to her cart that she didn't ask for, so she had to manually remove them. What's all this extra stuff, what am I? And if you didn't know any better, you might just keep them in there and end up paying more. So what is your hassle score for Bluehost, Letitia? Bluehost was super quick and easy. I just hated that they added a bunch of random crap to my cart. After removing those, the rest of the process was pretty simple and didn't take too long. Three out of 10. Okay, so my homepage loaded in 2.8 seconds on Bluehost, which is actually really good. And here's what you get. 10 gigs of storage. You do get a free domain name, free migration, security certificate, automatic backups, 
and unlimited traffic. And the number of websites you get is 10. So tied for second place there. I'm gonna put Bluehost in A tier, you know, solid performance and decent features. Just watch out for those add-ons that they try to sneak into your cart. Okay, next we have Ionos. Now they have an intro price of just $1 a month, which sounds great, right? And Letitia found their process simple enough, but everything just took way too long to complete. Um, cool, WordPress is still being installed. Okay. Oh man, is this going to take forever like it did with GoDaddy? And your hassle score? INS website was easy. Checkout was long as hell. And it took ages to get to the WordPress dashboard. But it was easier than a lot of the others. So I'll give it a 6 out of 10. So load speed was 3.4 seconds. Super borderline. Remember, 3 seconds is what we want. And here's what you get. Storage. Unlimited. You get a free domain name. You don't get free migration. You do get a security certificate. You get automatic backups unlimited traffic, and you only get one website. Again, fine if all you need is one. Overall, Ionos isn't bad. I'm putting it into B tier. That $1 price is tempting, but there are a few negatives, like you know the one website uh, limit and the setup process was just really slow. All right, next we have DreamHost at $2.95 a month. So this is where things got really bad for Letitia. They gave her no direction on how to find WordPress. And unlike other hosts, it didn't automatically redirect her there, which is just going to be really confusing if you don't know what you're doing. Did I click the wrong thing from here? No, I clicked on WordPress. Maybe I should click on this WordPress. Oh my god. All right, so what's your hassle score? DreamHost was a nightmare. It took up to an hour before I got verified. Their system was confusing. The only reason I eventually got to the WordPress dashboard was because ChatGPT helped me. So, 8 out of 10. The only bright spot here was the load speed was pretty good at 2.88 seconds. And your features are 50 gigs of storage, which is pretty good, it's high. You do get a free domain name, free migration, security certificate, automatic backups, unlimited traffic, and you do just get one website. So unfortunately, DreamHost goes in D tier. They do have great storage and speed, but their setup experience is a nightmare. And if you're kind of new at this, you're gonna struggle. Okay, next up we have hosting.com, which is also known as A2 hosting, so it's a little confusing. But anyway, they're $2.99 a month. And Letitia did find their website pretty confusing with unclear option names and no clear explanation of what the different plans offered. Okay, this doesn't really say anything about WordPress. So that's, is it the same or is it different? So how'd this one go, Letitia? A2 hosting was pretty easy to follow the steps, didn't take super long, and the website was just a little confusing. But other than that, it was pretty quick and painless. So three out of 10. All right, so load speed was under the wire at 2.76 seconds. You get 15 gigs of storage, which is definitely on the low side. You get a free domain name, no free migration. You do get the security certificate, no automatic backups. You do get unlimited traffic. And again, you just get one website. So I'm gonna put hosting.com a2 in the B tier. Decent speed. They've got some of the features. Overall, it's a good choice, but that ordering process was just kind of confusing. So that's, that's what's stopping it from A tier. Okay, next up we have Namecheap. They have the second lowest price at $1.98 a month, but there's a catch. You do get a free domain name, but not a .com, right? Only other extensions like .net or .biz. And generally, you want a .com for your business. Especially if you're in the United States, it's just what's expected. It's what people would assume your website's gonna have. So anything else kind of gets confusing for people and they, they're likely to type in the wrong website address. And Letitia's support experience was terrible. It took 45 minutes to get a response. And even then they just gave her instructions how to do it herself instead of actually helping. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, but why is it a problem here? Because I've done it with the other hosting companies and it was fine. And your hassle score? The website was super confusing. Chat support should be renamed chat to yourself because that's what I did for 45 minutes. The only plus was that their checkout was easy. So six out of 10 on the hassle score. All right, so the load speed was 3.44 seconds. Again, a little on the high side and then features. So we have 20 gigs of storage. You do get a free domain name, but again, not a .com. Gotta pay extra for that. 
You do get free migration. You don't get a security certificate. You get automatic backups, unlimited traffic. Number of websites you get is three. So I'm gonna put Namecheap into the C tier, right? It's cheap, but at the end of the day, these are all cheap, right? They don't give you the .com domain, no security certificate, which is, you kinda need that, and not so great support. Okay, now we have InMotion at $2.95 a month. This was the worst experience on our entire list. Letitia couldn't even get to the WordPress dashboard because their system kept redirecting her to dangerous sites. Okay, I, I give up. I don't know where to go here. So what's the hassle score, Letitia? Well, their system was absolute crap. No guidance, no direction. And when I finally found the WordPress dashboard on my own, it kept redirecting me to a dangerous site. So I never actually got to the WordPress dashboard, which is kind of the whole freaking point. So 10 out of 10 on the hassle score. Now in load speed was the second slowest after GoDaddy at 4.34 seconds. But onto the features. So 25 gigs of storage, you do get a free domain name, free migration, security certificate, automatic backups, unlimited traffic, and you do get one website with it. But if you pay $2 more, you get unlimited websites. So there's that. So InMotion, got to put you in F tier for that onboarding process alone. Their features list seems okay, but it loads slow. And if you can't even get into WordPress, what are we doing here? So Hostinger is still the clear winner. And if you want to get started with them, grab my affiliate link right here, which is going to save you even more money, making them one of the cheapest on this list as well as the overall best pick. It's what I recommend to all my students in my paid website course, just because of how easy it is to get up and running and all of their features. So click here to get your discount and happy building.